The Fabrashi makes her presence known through a call that echoes through the canyons of the Mesa. This large cat is known to us as the Fabrashi. Adorned with a spectacular crown of eggs, the Fabrashi certainly has a striking appearance. Over five meters tall, the Fabrashi is one of the largest cats that walk these lands. They have sharp claws that they use to grapple prey, which are especially deadly when used in conjunction with their fantastic eyesight. Fabrashi are hoarders of all sorts of eye-catching items and decorate their coats with shiny objects in order to impress potential mates. The Fabrashi is a rather rare creature, and individuals live separately in large territories that can span multiple biomes. These cats are most common in the southern regions, like the tundra and the mesa, the area that this female has claimed as her own. Fabrashi can be extremely territorial and will fiercely defend their homes from potential challengers. The Fabrashi makes a quick stop on her patrol to mark her territory, which is done by rolling. This rubs scent markers on her chin and chest into the ground, which lets other Fabrashi know that this area is already occupied. Satisfied, she continues on her march. Soon, she arrives at her favorite area. This place is a viewpoint that looks over all of her hunting grounds. The Fabrashi have keen eyesight, so this perch is perfect for spotting food. Fortunately for any potential prey, the Fabrashi is not hungry, yet. And so, she returns to her home for the night. Within the Fabrashi den, there sits a large stash of eggs. These eggs do not belong to the Fabrashi, and instead she has stolen them from a variety of different creatures. While many may assume she has stolen them to eat them, this in fact would be wrong. She is simply a collector, and these eggs are her treasure. Morning comes, the sun rises, and the Fabrashi wakes from her sleep. By the watering hole, there is a medium-sized rabbit creature known as the Cloviloper. In folklore, this creature is seen as a bringer of good fortune, and one is very lucky to lay eyes on it. This Fabrashi must be very lucky indeed. She ambushes the Cloviloper, causing it to panic and flee. There is nowhere to hide in the desert. The Cloviloper turns back towards the Mesa, accidentally cornering itself. The Fabrashi approaches. He's been caught. Perhaps the Fabrashe will finish him off in her den. But she doesn't. This Cloviloper has a rare mutation, which causes parts of a creature's coat to glow or glimmer, and is usually a death sentence for prey animals like the Cloviloper. However, this mutation has elicited a positive response in the Fabrashe, and it seems that she simply wants to add him to her collection. As cute as this may seem, the Fabrashi could change her mind at any moment. Panicked, the Cloviloper attempts to escape, but is intercepted by his captor. He attempts this multiple times, but every attempt ends in failure. Eventually, he gives in and settles down, with the Fabrashi lying next to him, pleased. Later in the evening, the Cloviloper makes sure his captor is sleeping and quickly escapes. As the Fabrashe wakes, she notices that something is missing. The Cloviloper. The Fabrashe is very distressed and leaves her den to call for him. It is extremely common for the Fabrashe to form a strong emotional attachment to their collection and can get fiercely protective over them. To her, the Cloviloper was her prized possession. And so she searches and searches and searches until she ends up on her lookout post. This has gone far beyond the normal behavior for a Fabrashi looking for an item, and it looks like she is searching for it as if it were her cub. It seems like her wailing has attracted a different kind of attention, a male Fabrashi. It is likely that he has originated from the mountains, evidenced by his gray coloration. He believes that she is looking for a mate. The young male approaches her, but after making himself known, he is ignored. Rejection stings. Frustrated, the male watches her continue to call. To him, this is a sign that she is looking for a better mate. Is he not good enough? Playfully, 
the male nips at the female's tail, but she is having none of it. Defeated, the male sits down. He watches her for a short time, confused but curious. But after a while, he decides to leave, as she is clearly not interested. The female continues to cry into the night before she eventually returns to her den. The Cloviloper is not coming back. This mischievous group of creatures are known as Beluveraptors, and they are on a heist. Despite being small and seemingly unthreatening, a gang of Beluveraptors is a force to be reckoned with. But tonight, they won't be hunting. Instead, their objective is egg stealing. The leader organizes his gang, sending one off on his own and leading the rest to their loot, laying in the center of the Fabrache den. She's sleeping right now, so it is a perfect time to attack. Carefully, the leader and one of the others sneak into the den and hide behind her. Beluveraptors are smart, and these criminals are organized. The remaining Beluveraptors charge, startling the Fabrache awake. These felines are very reactive creatures, and their quick bursts of rage are used against them by the Beluveraptors. She is baited away from the eggs, falling right into their scheme. The other Beluveraptors focus in on the eggs. The Fabrache turns around. There are more than she thought. She immediately charges at the pair. The leader makes it out with an egg, but his comrade is not so lucky. The Fabrache dines on the Beluveraptor, while the gang celebrates their victory outside. Another dawn breaks upon the Mesa, and like usual, the Fabrache leaves her den. This morning, however, she has a different girl in mind. A herd of Pleiares. These creatures are tall ungulates that inhabit the mountainous regions. They have long legs and necks to allow them to feed on hard-to-reach foliage and fruit. Although they are mostly herbivorous, these creatures also possess long tongues that allow them to drink nectar or even feast on termites when the opportunity arises. Despite their tall stature, the Fabrache still sees them as prey. She has a target. This Pleiares has an injured leg from an attack by another carnivore. This makes it the perfect target for the Fabrache, as it will be easier to take down compared to its healthier herdmates. Carefully, the Fabrache stalks the group. Despite her powerful bite and sharp claws, the Pleiares is not a creature to be underestimated and can do significant damage when defending itself. The Fabrache must be cautious, as wounds from these creatures could be fatal. She ambushes the herd. At first they flee, but one male turns back to face the approaching cat. He knocks her over, sabotaging her advance. He batters her with his hooves, but she gets up before he can do substantial damage. He chases her off. This was too close for comfort, and the Fabrache accepts her defeat. Most Fabrache hunts fail, and only one in five hunts are successful. After returning to the Mesa, she seems to have company. The male from earlier has returned. He's been looking for her. He calls to the female, but she dismisses him. He won't give up that easily. He calls at her again, and rolls on the ground, showing that he is not a threat. The female approaches him and sniffs. Maybe he's not so bad after all. She'll give him a chance. The male shakes his crown. Fabrashi are very flashy creatures, and often use their impressive crowns to flirt with one another. The female seems flattered. It's working. The male gets up and bows to the female. For Fabrashi, bowing is the utmost form of respect. Their bond is solidified when the female reciprocates. This courting ritual can last up to two weeks, and is the female's test to see if the male would be an adequate father to their cubs. It's clear that she's grown fond of him. We revisit Arthur Brache a few months later, and find that she now has cubs. It seems that the male's charm certainly paid off. The female leads her cubs on their first ever patrol through the mesa, taking them to her favorite viewpoint. These cubs are her dynasty, and she will do her best to raise them into skilled hunters. The future seems bright for these youngsters as they look down on Scenario. <laughs>